Countdown to craziness is coming your way tomorrow. We're so close to the return of Duke men's basketball. Can't wait to talk about it all on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils. Hi, everybody. Dick Vitale. Hey, make sure you listen, man, to Locked On Blue Devils with J.J. Jackson. He's awesome, baby. You are Locked On Blue Devils, your daily podcast on the Duke Blue Devils, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody, and welcome into another episode of the Lockdown Blue Devils podcast. My name is JJ Jackson, and it's so great to have you here with us on this Thursday, October 19th, 2023. Tomorrow is the return of Duke basketball, as they will have countdown to craziness. We'll be able to talk about that, what's going on with this Duke basketball team. The AP poll has officially been released. There's a new scrimmage video that we could break down and so much more, and we'll do that throughout today's show. If you have not done so already, follow us on Twitter at LO underscore Blue Devils. I'm on Twitter at underscore JJ underscore Jackson underscore. Kevin Connolly is the site expert for Ball Durham. He'll be joining us on today's show. Excited for that conversation. And make sure you subscribe to our podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. Watch the show daily on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button to our YouTube channel. Again, your support just means so much to us. So let's bring in my good friend, Kevin Connolly, once again, from Ball Durham to talk all things Duke basketball. And Kevin, here we are. We're one day away from Countdown to Craziness, which now means we are 18 days away from the first real Duke Hoops game of the season on that uh, Monday, November 6th. How are you, man? I'm good, JJ. How are you? Yeah, it, it's crazy. <laughs> we feel like we talked about it all uh, summer long, really, coming down, Countdown to Craziness, exhibitions, opening night, and now it's here. We're we're here. and um, Let's be honest, Friday's a huge night in the Duke basketball world. Not o- not only like the unofficial kickoff, or I should say tip-off to the season, but all the recruits that are going to be on campus um, for Countdown to Craziness. Obviously, more rumors circulating now with Cooper Flagg and UConn's chances, um, VJ Edgecombe, Patrick Nangaba as well. Uh, so Friday is a huge night in the Duke basketball world, even aside just from it's like the unofficial start to the season. Yeah, we're just excited to see the Duke players. Introductions are always something that I love when guys get their moment to kind of run out um, as they're introduced. John Shire was introduced at Countdown a season ago. We saw a couple of dance moves from the head coach in his Countdown intro last season. So uh, excited to see all of that. And then with these Duke guys in their own uniforms, getting to play a little five on five. We've got another scrimmage that we're going to be able to break down just a little bit with what we saw. But now... It'll be happening live. We'll see more of the missed shots than we've seen in some of these kind of uncut clips and whatnot. So uh, really just excited to see some competition of these guys going at one another, Kevin. Yeah, it's funny. Called uncut clips, but they're very cut, right? They're very (laughs) edited. It's not uh, 20 minutes of live ball that you're seeing players run up and down the floor and and fouls and turnovers and missed shots and all that stuff. So uh, you'll get about 20 minutes of that on Friday <laughs> night. And again, that that's probably my favorite part of the event is seeing the guys um, look between two sides and just playing ball for uh, about 20 minutes. You always cross your fingers and knock on wood that you get no injuries. Um, but yeah, it, it's fun to see. Really excited to see it all unfold. And then to your point with countdown happening, Tomorrow night, just such a big recruiting opportunity for the program. Cooper Flagg set to make his official visit to Duke. That's the main storyline I think that a lot of people are wanting to discuss. There has been a lot of momentum in UConn's favor um, uh, over the last few weeks. But I'm curious if once he gets back in Durham on Duke's campus, like we see from time to time, I really would not be surprised at all if all of a sudden you see that momentum kind of shift back towards Duke's favor once he's back in Durham. Well, it's interesting what you say about the momentum, because I think the the two biggest factors in that momentum are UConn fans on social media. And also now what happened, I think it was on Monday night um, with Frank Isola on the broadcast of uh, the Brooklyn Nets preseason game on, on the Yes Network um, in saying that he was predicting uh, Cooper flag to go to UConn, which I do think holds some weight because Frank Isola has a serious XM uh, 
show on NBA radio in the mornings with Brian Scalabrini. And now Brian Scalabrini um, worked out Cooper flag, the two work out together. Scalabrini was training him um, when he was still a high school player up in Maine, the two remained very close. So you would imagine if there is some inside info, Brian Scalabrini would have it and then pass it along to, to Frank Isola just in talking because the two of them work five days a week together for three hours a day um, on the radio show. So um, I did find that interesting. Now um, you could always say, um, not com- conspiracy theory because um, these things do happen, but someone just gives a nudge to Isola and say, hey, get this out there that uh, Cooper Flag is really considering UConn because everyone thinks he- he's a Duke lock just to make it a little bit more interesting. And then obviously at the end of um, talking about it, Isola did say, if I'm wrong, don't don't come after me. Don't kill me for this. So um, it- it's interesting. It certainly throws another level of interest there. Um, and we'll see what happens because it feels like a decision is going to come um, a little bit after uh, this weekend when Cooper Flag returns back to Montverde Academy in Florida. Yeah, and I think also when you look at what's happening with uh, with the recruiting sweepstakes of it all, uh, we've also got other players expected to be in attendance uh, that are 2024 class recruits that probably want to make the same type decisions, Kevin, prior to their senior season. You mentioned a couple of them in VJ Edgecombe and Patrick Ngaba the second. I mean, I would imagine those guys are probably nearing final decisions as well because the trend tends to be, it makes sense, but it tends to be, let's get this out of the way before my high school season starts so you could really kind of enjoy that senior ride uh, with all the people you've grown up around and that sort of thing. Yeah, I think you a good point there. I think Ngaba is much closer to a decision than Edgecombe. Um, Because remember, Edgecombe had 10 finalists, nine college schools, and the G League Ignite. Um, Ningaba had had a lot of finalists as well. I think he had eight. Um, But it seems like he's narrowed down. Um, Edgecombe was still going on all of his official visits just about to all of his finalists. So um, I think Ningaba will become closer to a decision before his high school season really gets underway than VJ Edgecombe will be. Well, let's keep talking about it all. We've got uh, the AP preseason top 25 poll has been released. We've also got more... Uh, kind of scrimmage footage that we want to break down. And we'll do that after our first time out here today on Locked on Blue Devils. Locked on Blue Devils here today brought to you by our friends over at Jace Medical. I want to tell you a little bit about the Jace case. It's a personalized emergency medication kit that contains five essential antibiotics that treat the most common and deadly bacterial infections. You can also customize your case and additional life-saving medications based on your unique needs. Jace Medical offers customability for your Jace case with dozens of those add-on medications. Jace is continually working to expand their medication offerings. In those recent efforts, they added a lot of great options as well. Go to jacemedical.com and enter code locked on at checkout for a $20 discount on your order. That's promo code locked on at Jace Medical, J A S E Medical.com. Jace Medical is a proud sponsor of Locked On Blue Devils. Another sponsor to let you know about is our friends over at FanDuel. When you're talking about America's number one sports book, FanDuel is the answer this NFL season. New customers get $200. In bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. We've got a lot going on this NFL season. A Thursday night game again tonight between the Jaguars and the Saints. A lot of awesome things happening over at FanDuel. No better time to get in on the action with spreads, player props, over-unders, and so much more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel is an official partner of the NFL. Moving forward here on today's episode of Lockdown Blue Devils, JJ Jackson alongside my friend Kevin Connolly, the site expert for Ball Durham. Tell us a little bit about Ball Durham. What is it? Well, we got everything in terms of Duke news, Duke notes, Duke's opinions, um, everything on Duke. We have it. So uh, come give us a follow on Twitter at ball underscore Durham. And then you could read us every day at balldurham.com. Um, football team, massive game Saturday night on the road against Florida State. And obviously, um, we're, we're, we're in it. We're in basketball season already. So, um, we got everything covered from Riley Leonard's ankle injury updates all the way to countdown to craziness and, um, scrimmage highlights and all that stuff. So, yeah. uh, ballderham.com is everything you guys need, uh, for Duke news and notes. 
everything in between. You're exactly right about that. What a big weekend between countdown and then uh, what a mass, another primetime game for the Stoop football program. Uh, we've never beat Florida State before. 0-19 all time. Feels like a good weekend to change that trend, Kevin. Well, I, I don't want to alienate any of your viewers, but I am a New York Jets fan. And last <laughs> weekend, they had never beaten the Philadelphia Eagles, and they did it. So maybe now that'll rub yeah. off to the Duke football team, never beating Florida State, and maybe they'll do it this weekend. I love that. Let's make it happen for sure. All right, so talking about the Stoop team in particular, you and I at this all offseason have kind of been looking at those way too early top 25s. It's been some of our favorite episodes this offseason. A lot of comments on YouTube when we've had those conversations and want that to continue here. Now we officially know the preseason top 25 poll has come out. Duke, the number two team in the entire country. The Kansas Jayhawks are number one. What did you think of this top 25? If I had to think of a word, I'd say predictable. I think it was very predictable. I mean, basically everything you heard from people who either have votes in the AP Top 25 or people who don't have votes in the AP Top 25 but are um, your high-ranking college basketball insiders, Kansas won Duke 2. Now, a couple of them would have it reversed, saying Duke won Kansas 2, but it felt like you knew those two teams were going to be at the top of the poll. Um, it shakes out that Kansas is first. Again, it feels like their addition of Hunter Dickinson really pushed them over the top. Uh, but, hey, you don't want to be number one in the preseason. You want to be number one in the postseason, right? So I think um, it, it's a great topic for conversation and, and debate, um, especially when we're, we're earning for those uh, topics and, and in the offseason. But now that it's here, again, it's it's more of like a, a footnote because even when you get in the season, you're not going to be looking at the poll that much unless you have a top five, top ten matchup on your schedule. Yeah, I mean, we do these for for a reason. The AP poll is there each and every year, and it will continue to be. And and it's good to see Duke at the top once again to really see kind of the big expectations. Every single season, Duke basketball as a program has national championship aspirations. That's the goal each and every year, and it is attainable each and every year. However, there's still some seasons that you see Duke kind of lower in the rankings in the top. 15 range when you go into a season. We never really see Duke outside of the top 25 going into the year. So uh, I just think, uh, yes, each and every year, we, we think this Duke team is capable of winning a national championship. But seeing Duke at the top, once again, as a Duke basketball fan, should validate your opinions, your hopes, everything about ultimately what this team would be able to walk away and accomplish this season. Yeah, absolutely. This team has the talent to win a national championship. Now you need more than talent just to win a title. Um, you need the chemistry. You need um, injury luck. Um, yeah, th things. you need a good draw in the NCAA tournament. I mean, how many times is the NCAA tournament? It's, it's matchup based. It's not who's better than who, who had a bigger, better regular season than who. It's you have to get a draw where you match up well with teams. So um, a lot goes into winning a title, especially in college basketball, which is such a chaotic postseason with one loss and you're done. Uh, but it, it is certainly exciting to see the team ranked two, and I think deservedly so. Here's some numbers that Duke released once again uh, to kind of put all of this in perspective. This is the 16th consecutive season Duke men's basketball has been ranked inside the top 10 to open up the year and the nation's longest streak of being ranked at any point top 10 in the season for 28 consecutive years so uh really really good stuff from the stuke basketball team once again and it's funny because you look back at some of the teams and you're like oh man that team maybe wasn't that good or i thought they'd be better than they were but uh and something you think they were better than i thought they were going to be and still found a way at some point in the season to be inside the top 10 17th time all time that duke has debuted inside the top three in the ap preseason poll so Big expectations for this team again tomorrow night. We've got Countdown to Craziness, the exhibition against UNC Pembroke on November 1st, and then on Monday, November 6th, we'll see Duke start the season off with their first game uh, at against Dartmouth. So really excited for that game to kind of come into play and see all of that action unfold. I, I think it's going to be uh, just really fun to watch this season. And uh, just tired of kind of talking about things, Kevin. This just means we're getting closer to actually having real footage, real box scores, real kind of opinions uh, to come into play for what this Duke team can do. 
yeah, it, it, it's certainly exciting. Can't wait. All right, so let's get into this reaction video, or give our reaction, I should say, to more footage that's been released. Once again, we totaled up the player scoring numbers and more, and we'll do that after our final timeout here on today's episode of Locked on Blue Devils. All right, our friends Locked on Blue Devils are brought to you here today by eBay Motors. eBay Motors, our absolute favorite friends. You want to make sure passion, drive, and patience, that's what brings home the winning trophy, and it also keeps you safe, ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and so much more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Moving forward here on today's episode of Lockdown Blue Devils, once again alongside Kevin Conley, I'm J.J. Jackson. So moments ago, you know, we're talking about uh, we're excited for talking season to be over, excited to actually have kind of real footage to break down we got a little uncut scrimmage videos that we want to break down. Once again, another scrimmage with ACC officials in the house. Duke basketball just keeps giving us the big content. I'll go over the scoring numbers here in just a moment. There was no Mark Mitchell the last time out. There's no Kyle Filipowski in these videos. Uh, but, uh, man, it's fun to see these guys go after one another in these practice-type settings. And I think one of the bigger takeaways in general, Kevin, it's like, man, John Shire's got difficult decisions to make because you look at all these scholarship players, there's only one basketball and only five players on the court at a single time uh, that you could share all this love with. In football is if you have two quarterbacks, you really have none, right? That's that's what that's what kind of that old time saying was. But um I think, I, I, yeah, I mean, this, this team has talent. This team has a lot of talent. I mean, we don't talk about players as much like a Jaden Shute, although you're the captain of the, of the bandwagon. Um, Christian Reeves, player like that. Uh, Jalen Blakes, I mean, what is he, your fourth or fifth guard? And yeah. he's got a ton of talent. He was the leading scorer for, I think, three ACC games last year for Duke. Um, so, yeah, it, it's it's tough. But this team, this team has a load of talent. And I, I think John Shire – He's got a lot on his plate this season. Let's be honest. He's got to find a way to get these guys in the game to try and uh, keep everybody happy because, you know, some scholarship guys are not going to be happy if they're not getting a lot of minutes. Uh, so uh, we're going to see, but certainly these scrimmages give us a little peek inside the window at what could uh, what could be coming. Yeah, so let's take a look at this. A, a big-time performance once again in these uh, videos that has been released by the Duke men's basketball social staff. You can find it on YouTube, and we'll link that video once again, down in our uh, description, if you're watching us on this Locked On Blue Devils YouTube video. So, Caleb Foster led the way once again. He had 19 points in the last video, uh, 27, just your casual 27 points that he was able to pour in this time. Tyrese Proctor with 14, Mark Mitchell with 12, Jaden Shute had 10 points, Jared McCain had 10, Ryan Young had 10, TJ Power, 9 points on three made three-point jumpers, Sean Stewart had 8, Jeremy Roach had 6, Jalen Blakes had 4, Christian Reeves had a dunk. He had two points uh, in the action as well. Caleb Foster, man, talk of the town right now, what this guy could do for the Stoop team. A lot of people think that potentially Jared McCain gets that fifth starter spot, so that means somebody like Caleb Foster is coming off the bench for the Stoop team. So many just difficult, hard drives to the basket, uh, what we're seeing a lot of from Caleb Foster these days. He's going to be a player for Blue Devils this season. Yeah, he's going to be a player, and I think the biggest thing you like when you see him is he has no fear. He has absolutely no fear when going to the basket. He has no fear with the ball in his hands. Now, granted, let's be honest, it's easy to not have fear in an empty gym playing against your teammates. When the bright lights come on and you're playing on the road in front of 25,000 fans uh, and they're all booing and screaming against you, I think then you're going to learn a lot more about how much – how little fear 
uh, Caleb Foster has, but everything we've seen so far in this offseason um, has nearly been perfect from Caleb Foster. And you wonder, um, maybe if he was a couple inches taller, a little heavier, a little bulkier, he'd probably be that fit starter with the way he's been performing and what we've seen so far and these scrimmages that we've seen. Now, we don't know how um, the closed-door practices are going with no footage, um, but certainly in these uh, videos that Duke is releasing, Caleb Foster has arguably been the best player. Yeah, I'm looking at all, just the, the quantity of ball handlers and, and quality by that degree as well. Uh, shout out someone like Wendell Moore Jr., right, who was an absolute gamer throughout his Duke career, but he's having to spend a lot of time in his career as a primary ball handler for this Duke basketball team. Whereas you look at these videos, much more comfortable guards kind of getting you into your offense, setting things up, whether it be a Foster, Roach, Proctor, like Duke's got some ball handlers that are going to be able to make things happen and set others up for success. I mean, you look at the numbers like Power, pours in nine points, Jaden Shoot had big time jumpers, walks away with 10, Jared McCain knocked down two three-pointers. I mean, these ball handlers are setting their teammates up well. Yeah, they are. And I think we talked about how everyone, anyone on Duke is going to have the ability to run the floor off a defensive rebound. Um, that's still going to be true, but you're going to want the ball in the hands of some of these guards because they're going to put it on a tee for guys like Kyle Filipowski and Mark Mitchell, Jared McCain, even for themselves in the opposite guard who's not handling the ball. They're going to put it on a tee for these guys and put them in the best position they can to go score the ball. All right, Duke basketball tomorrow. We've got Countdown to Craziness. ACC Network Extra is how you'll be able to kind of watch the broadcast, log into your ESPN app, uh, and you'll find it over there, ACC Network Extra, to check out the action for Countdown to Craziness. Kevin, as always, it's fun talking ball with you. Before you go, though, I, I do need to hear from you. Cooper Flag is in town this weekend. Big recruit. What's that one last sales pitch for Duke fans on behalf of Duke fans to get Cooper Flag to commit to the Brotherhood? This is the Brotherhood. This is Duke. <laughs> um, we we win. We consistently win. Um, we we win ACC championships. We win NCAA championships. Um, we're going to put you in the best spot you can uh, to be the number one overall pick in next year's NBA draft. So um, I have jo John Shia will probably have it a little bit better than I do in his final sales pitch, but um, we're going to see what it comes down to. And I, I trust Duke uh, to try and close this out. Let's make it happen. Let's have a big weekend. Kevin, as always, we'll talk to you again soon. Okay. Thanks for the time today. Anytime, JJ. All right. That's Kevin Conley, the site expert for Ball Durham. A lot of good stories coming over there at balldurham.com. So do yourself a favor and go check out that written work over on that website. That'll do it for today's show. Thanks so much for tuning in. As always, go Duke. I'll talk to you tomorrow. My name is JJ Jackson. Thank you and good day.